Amal Kumar and in this video we'll summarize the similarities and differences between direct and inverse relation right so we'll make two columns and then we'll try to write how they are similar or how they're different right so we we'll look into a few aspects one of them is definitely the equation right so we'll start with equation and then from the equation we'll consider a few other points let's begin with equation and let me write direct relation on left side this is for direct relation and let this be for inverse remember the two terms are direct and inverse not indirect okay so it is not never indirect so direct relation or inverse relation that is what we're talking about so as far as the equation is concerned for a direct relation the independent variable is represented as I should say the dependent variable y is equals to constant times the independent variable x in inverse relation y is equals to k divided by x so that is how the equations are different now as soon as I write x in the denominator I understand that x cannot be equal to zero so we have some kind of restrictions so what we also note here is that inverse relation has restrictions is that okay on x right so, or the independent variable so always if we are writing instruct a restriction they are on on x right well since these have some meaningful values k is always non-zero so here here we have to remember that k in both cases is non-zero so we have k is non-zero or not equal to zero is it okay yeah k is non-zero or k is not equal to zero correct now these equations can be written in different form also we can also write this equation as y over x is equals to constant and here we could write this equation as the product let me write down as product which is x times y so we could write this as x times y equals to constant do you see that now once you write it in this form we say this is kind of a proportional right so here it is product so we say in inverse product is constant and in direct we have constant proportion so that constant proportion also gives you the name of k for direct relation sometimes we refer k as a constant proportion right so because that is that is what it is now these are a few things which you get from the equation if I give you the graph then how will the graphs be related for a direct relation will always have a straight line which will be either positive but they will always go through zero kind of like this so we will always have a straight line which could be like this or it could be negative kind of like this depending on the value of k if k is let me write less than zero negative then it will be kind of like this for negative k however if k is greater than zero then then the line will be like increasing line is it okay so that is how the graph will look like on the other hand if we have inverse relation then the graph will be like one of a reciprocal function which is kind of like this so like this this is when k is greater than zero that means positive if k value is negative then the graph will be reflected on this axis it will be kind of like this this is for k less than zero that means negative value of k right now uh, I just showed with dotted lines at times we could only have some discrete values like natural numbers 
in that case you don't have to join your graph so remember that part also so sometimes we'll show the graph with connected lines whenever we show with connected lines we are saying that x can take all real values but whenever we show with dotted lines that means x can take some natural values or integers in this particular case so what you also see here is that the graph of indirect function uh, i mean what you also observe here is the da and the the graph of inverse function so what you also see here is that the graph of inverse relation will never go through zero so these curves will be approaching x-axis or y-axis but they will never touch so we'll never have x or y intercepts in inverse relation right so so that is the characteristics so what we see here amongst the characteristics is let me write down that this one is linear And here it is uh, like that of a is a curve, right? So like a reciprocal graph with restriction that x is never equal to zero. Do you see that? So that is how it is. Now from the graph you can always see and figure out whether the relation is direct or inverse depending on whether they are linear or like a reciprocal function. How do you find it from table of values? So that's another very important thing from table of values. How do you figure out uh, whether the values are given for direct relation or for inverse relation? Now from table of values we can always find whether it is direct or inverse using the property which is which is kind of like this if ratio is constant so table of values we, we are looking for constant ratio let me write complete constant ratio and in inverse we are looking for a constant product Right? So a constant product. Is it okay? So basically, we are exploring this part of the equation. Constant product for inverse and constant ratio for the direct relation. So let me give you an example on the side. Let us say, let us make a table here. And if we want to write some values which could represent direct relation, right in that case we could have zero zero is a good value to start with right so and then we can have one and we can see what the ratio could be so let's say the k value is three for us right so it'll be one times three if i write two two times three is six we could write minus one so we get minus three correct so here you will see the ratio three over one is three two over 6 over 2, so the ratio, which is y over x, is how much? Let's write it down. So in the first case, it is minus 3 over minus 1, which is 3. Here, you cannot find the ratio, right? So this, this ratio, we cannot never find. We cannot divide by 0. All other values, 3 over 1 is 3. And then 6 over 2 is also 3. So what we see here is the ratio is constant. If I have to create a table of values where it follows inverse relation, in that case, how do I choose my values? Product is same. Do you understand? So if we decide that the product K is equal to, let us say 10. In that case, what values can I have? I could have 10 and 1, I could have 2 and 5, I could have 5 and 2. Do you see? All right? We could have uh, minus 2, minus 5, minus 10, minus 1, minus 1, minus 10. So if we decide on the value of k, which is product of these two, we can easily create a table of values for the inverse relation. I hope you understand. 
So these are very important things to understand when we are working with direct and inverse relations. I'm Anil Kumar and I hope that summarizes what we have learned in this chapter. Thank you and all the best.